The last thing on Spotify is the Alien Anthology Explained, and then the Acolyte Series Review, which was the last time we were popular. Right. Um, with or all the Infamous. Star Wars really. Yeah. And when was that? What day was that uploaded? That was July 16th. Oh, good lord. It is, okay. it is almost October. <laughs> <laughs> So we okay. have lots to talk about. Yes, let's cover this. Okay. I've watched a bunch of Studio Ghibli movies. Yes. Ghibli movies. I want to hear about this Ghibli. I want to hear about the Ghibli verse. Dude, I have lost welcome, so welcome. much momentum. It's like you watch, and you 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 said the same thing when you were watching all of them. It's like I don't know. I don't know if I can take another one. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like, not that they're even bad, but it's, like, they're all so similar, and, like, Nothing. they're paced, they're paced like, a five-hour movie. Like, every single one of them is paced so terribly, and it just, ta- it feels like they go on forever. I, I'm halfway through Whisper of the Heart. I'm halfway oh, through... I like Whisper um, of the Heart. I'm halfway through ha- Howl's Moving Castle, but I, I just cannot... I just like I have to go do something else right now, <laughs> but I have I have watched quite a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about your. Um, uh, tell me about Ghibli. Let's let's go through it. I have I've watched a bunch of them, so we can we can have a quick chat about Ghibli here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, you I've started watched, with... on this list. I oh, you, you got. I've it. watched forty percent of them. Nine right. out of twenty-three. I'm um, at sixty-five percent. I I told you I the f- I don't really know why I all of a sudden had this. Actually, I do know why. We were on a trip. Uh, we went to Minneapolis, 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 Minnesota. Minneapolis. And we went to an art museum. Uh huh. And I was reminded how much I love Japanese art, mm. Chinese art, Korean art, the art from the Asia. You know. Oh yeah. Um, and I just had this, I was like, you know what, imagine like if I could look at this Japanese art and it was also a movie. And I thought, well, that is a thing that exists. <laughs> Whoa. So I can watch that. Um, so I started off with Tales from Earthsea, which is yes, a very boring absolutely. movie. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Great choice. Probably the worst one to start with. I didn't hate it. I thought it was uh, baffling that they chose to set up this incredibly cool world with you know wizards and dragons and things there's like the opening scene where you're with the kid and he kills his father and they're talking about dragons and stuff and you're like whoa this is going to be awesome Mm -hmm. and then it's like here's this farm and here's gandalf but he's bored all the time played by isn't it liam neeson yeah and willem dafoe is giving his career worst performance as the (sighs) the villain um i don't know what it is about these movies like they get these big names but all all of them sound like they just sat in a room and just read their lines off the page like none of them are giving it 100 percent from Isn't the ones John that i've Krasinski seen so far. in uh Tale- whisper of the heart he's in when he's in wind rises oh that's right yeah, yeah, the, yeah my favorite movie so far from this yeah. list much to your chagrin Oh, um, dude, I am chagrin. It is the worst one on my list. <laughs> I know. I I don't know, man. I'll get I'll get to it. I'll get to it. All right. Um, the next one I watched was Princess Mononoke. I actually okay. I got halfway through Earthsea and I thought this is not it. So I put on Princess Mononoke and I loved that one. I thought it was great. I think I was confused why Princess Mononoke is not even close to being the main character of that movie. Uh, she's just kind of there in the background for sort of a Zelda situation. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, and I liked it. It definitely has the uh, some of the more goopy elements. You know me. Mm. I don't like I don't like movies oh. that are too goopy. It's uh, true. Um, and there's those those pigs. Uh, the opening scene is like a the pig that's like possessed by the demon and he gets all like disintegrated and all that stuff anyway there's like some goopy moments that i don't i don't enjoy as much um i don't know what it is it's just like if something it throws off my vibe and i'm like i don't yeah. i'm not into this which is why i watched uh when i watched spirited away i was like yeah this also is also goopy it's, it's pretty goopy 
um the pig parents the literal like yeah. trash monster taking yeah, a bath I didn't vibe that with whole scene is crazy it away that much i loved the vo vocal performance from lilo from lilo and stitch she's great in it is she chihiro um, yeah she's chihiro wow i was like i know this voice deep inside my brain somewhere it's in there that's who it is that's cool. um i yeah. haven't rewatched nausicaa and in the valley of the wind uh nausicaa once i do i'm sure the wind i'm sure that will move up on my list when i rewatch it bro i fell asleep when we watched it the first time uh, but at this point i'm like remember it's when they pulled out the tank <laughs> Not really, no. The only thing I remember from that movie is being like, oh, Shia LaBeouf's in this, and then uh, Beatles. Patrick Stewart is what it. I remember. Patrick Stewart is in it. Dude, that I haven't rewatched. I'm going to rewatch. I'm forcing myself to wait until I watch more of these before I rewatch The Boy and the Hair. And okay. I have a feeling I will like it more than I did when I watched it last year. If you uh, liked uh, The Wind Rises, I think you'll you'll like it more yeah afterwards those two um, are those secret... two are the same movie so the uh the air yeti is a very cute movie um, uh-huh the it's gorgeous and cute and fun and that was so it's it's gonna it's gonna sit like towards the middle of the list i bet um the okay. lowest on my list right now is castle in the sky oh uh, <laughs> I just thought, where's the castle in the sky? Bro, Why it's am there. I not on the castle in the sky? Why am I not spending any time in the castle of the sky? Why is this cool robot in this movie, but I'm not spending any time with this cool robot in the movie? And I'm just following around this lady and these kids. I'm just like, uh, where's the castle in the sky? That's what I want from this movie. Hold on, just and you don't get there till like don't mind me. the last. Okay. It's a two-hour movie, <laughs> and you don't get to the castle in the sky till the very end, like oh. twenty minutes. I'm like, this is bad. Oh, uh, you're wrong. You are beautiful though. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. You go home uh, later and you watch Palm Poco. <laughs> your entire your all your opinions will flip. Okay, you watch that movie and you're like, wait, all the bad Ghibli movies are good and all the good okay. Ghibli movies are bad. Trust. That's the that's, raccoon one, right? Yes, that's the one that, that made pig, it. That's the... that's the one that clicked for me. That's, that's not when the I pilot finally pig movie, right? No, that's Porco Rosso. That one is right. trash. Um, <laughs> you're gonna watch. You're gonna watch uh, Kiwi's delivery. Kiki's delivery service. That one's fire. <laughs> and you're gonna want <laughs> Kiwi. You're gonna want to <sighs> hit up. Uh, you're gonna want to hit up. Totoro, you watch those yeah, three in quick succession, you'll be like, "Oh, okay. I get it." Okay, 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 okay. Okay, three in one day. I haven't. I've seen some of Ponyo in my years of life, but I haven't seen the whole thing. I need to watch that. Yeah, that's the only one I watched with Anna, and she was pretty hyped um, about that one. Oh my gosh, when Marnie was there, oh, oh, that movie so seen good. That one, to be fair. Oh my goodness, I loved that movie so much. Such a like, and this is, I think, since these two, The Wind Rises and When Marnie is There, are at the top of my list because okay. so far I'm quite enjoying when we're, we, we, we get a story that's like just set in the actual world and we're just like, we're seeing a story being told through the eyes of these incredible <laughs> artists. Um, like the wind rise, I think that's why I love the wind rises so much. Is that it was just like a very, um, like grounded story about this, you know, this airplane engineer in World War II era, um, and his romantic relationship with this girl, and it was just like nice, and I enjoyed oh, it, and it was paced like a normal mountain. movie, um, even though it it did it did feel kind of long, but like I enjoyed it. Because it felt normal, it's and it's not goopy at all. Insanity. That cannot be true. Uh, there's no goop in that movie. Uh, the the music is amazing. Uh, I loved it. I cry. I cry. Also, when Marnie was there, I cried. Mm. But we'll see what I what I watch next. I I need to finish Howl's Moving Castle. I was enjoying that movie. Um, it went in a direction I didn't expect it to go with her turning into an old woman, like, immediately. Oh, yeah. Um, 
and I was enjoying the commentary on like beauty and what beauty means in reality. Um, mm, mm, mm. But I obviously haven't finished the movie yet, so I don't. I know will be seeing Howl's that. Moving Castle in theaters on Saturday. That's a good call. I should have done that. Silly me. So um, get wrecked. I'm seeing uh, the Wild Robot later. I'm pretty hyped Heck about. Yeah, dude, I'm excited for it's, you. It's been described to me as a Miyazaki in, inspired film, so Ooh. that's exciting. Interesting stuff. Um, but what do you? Uh, that's that's where I'm at. Where? What have you been doing, dude? What watching, have I been into? Doing? What haven't I been doing? Am I right, guys? Oh, we can have um, our Dune discussion. I forgot we were gonna do that. Oh yeah. So anyway, uh, go ahead. up here, up here, briefly. By the way, uh, new background. Uh, <laughs> Just so, just so everybody, I got a couch now. Ramen, he's he's chilling. He's got his arm on the rest and everything. Ramen's on. Yes. Ramen's on. Uh, yes, I moved back in with my parents by choice. Uh, no, yeah, the the podcast is not doing well, guys. Like, oh, had to move back in with the rents. But all uh, of this is in an in a. There's we're, a greater we're plan. We're moving towards greatness. There's plans a greater plan. Plans. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, the segue to Dune. Yes. Yeah, so yes. in the background we have, you know, the Star Wars corner. We're gonna have Guardians here. I'm I'm getting a, my Christmas present this year is going to be the Milano Lego spaceship. Um, Very cool. Which looks cool right there. We got Thor: Love and Thunder, obviously sneaking in. Gross. Uh, we got so the bad. little Dungeons and Dragons corner down here with all the new Lego Dungeons and Dragons characters going there, uh, and then up here we got the Dune Creator Game of World uh, World Building corner. <laughs> oh. um, it's all it's That's all cool. real and Deadpool hiding. He's like what? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's one of the best um, things that's happened on the podcast is when you brought yeah. that out. Oh my gosh. So I told funny. my mom that story and she was like, did he kid. laugh? <laughs> and I was like, he did. <laughs> She's like, well, sure glad, did. You, glad it was worth it. And I was like, it was, glad mom, it was. spent $40 on it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never put popcorn or soda in it. Uh, but no, <laughs> ever, um, ever, ever, ever. we have both now finished the first two yes. books in Frank Herbert's Dune series. Dune saga okay. series. So that is the book Dune and the book Dune Messiah. So, um, as far as I'm aware, Denis Villeneuve mm. has a yes. third Dune film coming out, probably called Dune Part 3, uh, I'm assuming. Maybe That's Dune Messiah. True. He has um, he has said that if he were going to do the third movie, he would um, essentially it would be it would it he would describe it like it wouldn't feel like a third entry in a trilogy. It would feel like a completely standalone thing is mm. his vision for it. So I assume if it comes out, it'll be called Dune Messiah. Very good. Um, but yeah. So, um, but yes, we. We've both watched both movies. Um, mm. I've also watched... I, I'm assuming you've watched the 1975 David Lynch I movie. I have not, actually. Okay. Um, I, I, I might know. That one is uh, bad. But Sting plays Fade Rafa, so there's that. Um, it's a fun time, I'm sure. And we've both now finished the first two books. So... Here's the let's let's get the timeline set for both of us, okay? Yes. It's 2019. Yes. Jordan watches Dune. Okay. Yes. We'll when start there. Up. Boom. I do not watch Dune because I had vowed to watch the movies after I finished the first book, because I had heard for so long that the book is so good, and I wanted to uh, read it if you will. And um, <laughs> so I had made that vow to do that. Uh, yeah. um, mm. Well, it's like 2021. Yeah. Wait. Dune came out in 2021 or 2019? Like, no, it did come out Dune, in 2019. Uh, didn't it? No, it came out 2020 because we were, it was pandemic time. It was, it was pandemic years. I thought it was, I thought it was 2019 maybe. Let me look, let me look. Let me look, let me look. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's 2021. We're completely off. I okay. Yeah, when I said, okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. 
Um, so it's 2021. The movie comes out. I see it. You don't see it. Yes, I don't see it. I vow to read the book. I take this opportunity uh, to hear that this movie is a part one. I'm like, oh, exciting. I read the book. By the time I'm done reading it, the second movie will be out, and I'll watch them both right after I finish the book. Sure. It's going to be great. I read about 50, 60 pages in 2022 when I purchased the book in August. I know this because the receipt for the book is my bookmark. Uh, it was my bookmark in the first book, Whoa. which is now at Anna's house. Um, I put the book down because the book was bad. Um, <laughs> I then watched the movie... Uh, it's one of my first reviews on Letterboxd, if you go all the way back. Yes. Sometime in January of 2023. Uh, we have, we're, we're well into doing the podcast at this point. Yes. Sure. Over a year, I believe, at, at this point. Pr close to a year. Yeah. Um, I think even the trailer for Part 2 had come out when maybe. you saw Dune for the first time. Maybe. Um, I watched the first Dune, four and a half star review. I liked it. Aesthetically pleasing movie. Lots of good world building. Nice stuff. Mm. I take this momentum of Dunedom and go <laughs> into rereading the book from the beginning. Okay? okay yes. I get to where the movie ends. I stop again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is the best part of the book. Now the book is bad. I'm not going to keep going. Um, I get to, actually, I did, I did get a little bit past it because I remember reading that Thufir Hawat had lived, uh, through right. the, uh, thing. So I was excited to see him in the second movie. Uh, and, uh, oops, oops he does not appear. <laughs> um, he sure doesn't. And so I stopped reading again and then I said, you know what? I'm never going to finish this book. Uh, so I reduced myself to the audiobook, which for some reason I had this big, like, uh, vice, no, no prejudice against <laughs> audiobooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, if you listen to audiobooks, you're stupid and can't read. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it doesn't count if you listen to it. Yeah, you have to you're read not real. It. That's not real. You can't get um, graded on an audiobook. You have to read it. Write a book report. That's right. And, uh, but eventually I, uh, started listening to the audiobook, and guess what, guys? You can listen to an audiobook oh. while you do anything else. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so I so burned true. through that book, the whole Heck. thing. Every, like the drive home, the drive to work, laundry, building a yep. Lego set. I was in my mind. I was in Arrakis, okay? Arrakis. Yeah, you. Yeah. And uh, I covered that book real quick. Before the third, uh, rather, the Dune Part 2 came out. I was finished yeah. with the book, mm -hmm. uh, Dune. So I had high expectations for the second movie do, because um, it was a good book. I do want to point out that looking at your letterbox diary history here with the movie Dune, you watched it once, the first time February 1st, 2023. Yes. And then February, a year later... February 2024, you watch Dune on February 2nd, February 8th, February 15th, and February 26th in rapid succession. Yes. <laughs> and, wrote and then the next month you rewatched it again with, with no review. So one of these, I think, is a review for the book, I believe. Yes, that is true. About it. There is a, one so. of them is a book review. <laughs> uh, I just love that. That's your, your Dune obsession yeah. blossomed. It was like a... Over the course of <laughs> <laughs> um and so then in what in march finally uh yeah uh, march dune part dumb came out and i saw it with jordan i i flew across the country <laughs> to kansas city missouri to watch kansas dune part city, two missouri uh yeah, with jordan <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, we also filmed the Dune Part 1 uh, commentary track. Check that out. Um, it, as well as the up. quarters. Check that out. Um, look it up. And, it's a good uh, video. Saw... Nobody watched it. Absolutely. 
seems sort of the case with most of our stuff. Um, <laughs> sort of, sort of how it goes around here. But uh, we watched Dune Part Two two times. We went on the fourteenth, yeah. which was. I mean, this is a week after it came out already, right? So we're we're yeah, already we getting May Thy Knife, week. Chip and Shatter TikToks. Um, yes. But Dune Part Two. I came knew out that Anya we... Taylor Joy was in it, which was a huge bummer for me. But... Yes. Twitter is a rat hole. Uh, quote <laughs> rat hole um in more ways than one there you go we also watched uh most of speed racer i think we didn't quite finish it and then you <laughs> reviewed it and gave it? it you were tired i don't remember i don't know yeah. but uh we didn't finish it and it was sad and then i wrote this kick-ass <laughs> review okay anyway we watch um we watch dune part two on the 14th and you give it four stars yes then i watched it again Which and gave it four and a half bummer. Uh, which I said I would too. I read that review yesterday. I was like, "I'll add a half star tomorrow when I watch it again." <laughs> um, but okay. So the reason I didn't here, here here's the continuation of the timeline, right? So Jordan, yeah, yeah, yeah. then after the second movie has released, Jordan began watching the se- the first book, reading the first book. Sorry, reading the first. I I had read, um, I had read like the first, probably quarter of the book way okay. back. But yeah, after the second movie came out, I started from the beginning. Yeah. And started reading it all the way through, um, which pro- I probably took a good a year to read the whole thing. But Yeah. Um, Valid. Well, I guess that's not true, because if I saw it, if I saw Dune Part 2 March of this year, then I just, and I just rec- recently finished it, so. Okay. Since, a since little then. bit more than a year? Yeah. Oh, wait. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Lesson. So then. Anyway. Um, sometime in, I think June or July, I don't remember now, I started reading Messiah. I must, it, it was after my birthday because I got this for my birthday, the Dune set, uh, which you may notice, actually you might not, but one of those books is missing. It's at Jordan's house. Yes, I have it right here. Um, and, uh, that is Dune Messiah, which I read like 80% of in two days, uh, yes. while I was camping. It is an easier read. And then didn't pick up the book again for like three months uh, and then finished it recently. And uh, I was sitting right next to you when you finished it. It's true. We were in Oklahoma (laughs) and I put the book down. I was a little disappointed uh, with how it felt to me. And then Jordan read it in like a weekend. (laughs) Yep. And uh, absolutely loved it. It seems. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. So now you have the timeline. Let's discuss our opinions. So Dune Part 1. Perfect film. One of the greatest films of all time. (laughs) Yes. First Dune book. One of the greatest books of all time. Okay? Perfect, great stuff. Dune Part 2. Oh, so close. (laughs) So so close. So so close. That's so good, though. This is in in see this is where the paths diverge. We diverge. We diverge as a, a bit here. as a book first, technically, book first versus yep. book after. We have some differing opinions when it comes to the second Dune movie. It's a, in in, yeah. in all honesty, <clears throat> it is the difference between four and a half and five. But yes, because uh, I understand the bo- the movie is good. Okay, and the vision is good. Is, is good. Okay, uh, but my major differences right. here are the time skip or lack thereof, uh, Chani, and all that has fallen there, uh, and to a lesser extent connected with that, Jessica, and then um, the lack of Thufir Hawat. These are these are my tenets. These are my mm-hmm. oaths. Okay. So let's start with the time skip. So in the first book, right, after, I don't know when it takes place, there's some, some fighting has begun. Chani and Paul are in love. See, hi, yeah. Uh, they yes. get, they, they are wed, I believe. And then we have some time skip. It's in the middle of like a fugue state vision. Three, like three years pass or something. yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, <clears throat> Alia is born. She's a child, fully grown adult mind, 
with the, all yes. the memories of her ancestors or whatever, right? Right. Um, all the other reverend mothers. Right. She's getting, I mean, crazy town, right? Yeah, she's crazy. And she's cool. Shawnee and Paul have a son, yes. Leto Atreides the second. That's something I feel. I feel more strongly about the absence of their son. I feel like yes. that would have the time skip would have. I feel like would have added. Because I think having uh, Paul having a son at that point would have added something to the movie. But anyway, I continue. agree. So um, this this allows for more time in the desert, more time with the Fremen, uh, building mm. up this the mythos of Muad'Dib and Muad'Dib. The, the power of the Harkonnens coming back. And all this, right? It builds this strong rebellion arc. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes years. He is fully integrated into society. Jessica is fully yep. integrated as the powerful Reverend Mother. It serves its purpose. In the movie, the whole movie takes place over less than nine months because Jessica never gives yes. birth to Alia. And right. I think that it suffers the most with Chani, and this is my second point, that mm -hmm. their relationship does not feel like it has, a, it doesn't have enough time to be believable yeah. for me. So yeah, like, that's fair. she goes from hating outsiders and all this to quickly, he's not like the others. I love him, right? Yeah. It, it feels, it feels like Anakin... Uh, killing younglings for me. Yeah, it happens very quickly in the movie. And I think that a beautiful three-year time skip to allow for these characters to mature and grow together as people it would have been, uh, in my opinion, is a must-have. Uh, yeah. I think it would have been a lot better if that would have happened. And and to, to return to little Leto Atreides, the baby, um, yes. is killed off-screen. We never have a scene with the, the baby but right. the death of this son helps further in the future book the second book when we get mm. more stuff with Irulan and Chani and their little feud yes. uh, which also brings us back to Chani leaving at the end of the movie yeah which is a complete departure from the ending of the book which has Jessica who's also uh, changed here a lot in the movie, I feel, from... Well, maybe not a lot, but she's changed a little bit, her yeah. demeanor. Um, she goes from being, like... The, the, the relationship between T Johnny and Jessica is all, like, I know what you're doing with Paul. You shouldn't be doing this. He's a good kid. You're ma forcing him down this dark path to, mm -hmm. like... We may be, we may not be uh, married by law, but we'll be remembered in history as the lovers, the wives. And it's yes. like this powerful moment where they share this, uh, this kinship, you know, and it's beautiful, mm -hmm. truly, in my opinion. It's one of the greatest, it, it's, it's a nice ending, I feel, um, Versus the movie where she's obviously betrayed by uh, Paul choosing to marry Irulan. Um, mm. And he doesn't have time to explain when she runs away. He explains fully in the book. He's like, look. Yeah, he, I she mean, knows what's said, going on. He says it to everybody in there. He's like, this marriage yeah. is complete sham. I'm never even yeah. going to touch her. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And, we uh, shall that, not share a bed, and I yeah. will be sharing a bed with this woman. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I want right all over of you there. to know that. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> um, and that I felt was it, it was like I felt like it was a bad representation of Paul and Shawnee's relationship, and I think it stems from the lack of the time skip. Sure, uh, and then finally, Thufir Hawat is just n not present in the second movie yeah. at all. He was busy filming Civil War. Um, not even referenced. Yeah, what? And the, they kind of dropped the whole Mentat thing 
entirely. Yes. Which yes. Uh, is very important in the books that Paul is also a yeah. Mentat. That kind of makes him v- the Kuzat's Hatterak. Yes. Um, yeah. As well as in Dune Messiah when we get uh, hate. It's very I'm assuming important. it's pronounced hate. This is my... I was going to ask too. Uh, yeah. Height or hate or whatever. I, I didn't know. Uh, Duncan Idaho. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler uh, alert. Spoiler alert, by the way. Sorry about that. It's a... <laughs> But anyway. <laughs> it's um... fine. Because uh, it is, but it's. Bleh. It's a spoiler kind for of. a movie that we don't even anyway. know is coming out yet. Yeah. Or, like, what he's going to do with it. Because, yeah, you're, like, I think. Yeah, for me, like, the book. My main. Yeah, the thing that I was. That I'm now, like frustrated by the movie is is the the mentat thing like that you said like it is ve- it's very important to paul's character that and the existence of mentats in yeah. the universe um i'm not really sure why we don't get more kind of uh time talking about what is a mentat or like because even in the first movie where Thufir is a character and piter we don't they don't even really reference oh, that dude, piter is also a mentat <laughs> Not barely um, even a character. So sad. Yeah. Um, it's. I think it's implied in the movie that Thufir has like the com- like a computer for a brain, basically. Oh yeah, he um, he, does, he does that calculation or whatever. Yeah. Um, Three point one hundred and eighty-two yeah, billion I, salaries. <laughs> yes, I think it does. It definitely lessens the. Um, it, it it makes you not really understand how powerful Paul actually is outside of being like, whether is he the Mahdi, the Kwisatz Haderach or whatever, whether yeah. he is that or not, which is up for debate. Um, he is a mentat. Right. Like, and, and he has does been trained have, in the way. Yes. Has a trained in the way is able to access, you know, the prescient memory, mm. whatever he is like, he does have those abilities, but, in the movie, it's, I think it's left too much up for, like, maybe. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Um, um, but I think, like, the rest of... Like, I don't really mind Thufir not being in the second movie. I think a lot of the the changes that Dini makes to the material, I think, in general, work better for the screen. I think the main my main example of that is, like... I think it works better for these movies to have Paul kill the Baron um, because within the movies, like he's his motivation is more like he's he doesn't really want to start the jihad, but Mm -hmm. he does want to get revenge on the Harkonnens and kill the Baron. Um, And he sees becoming the Muad'Dib, the Kwisatz Haderach as a way to uh, empower the Fremen to join him on his quest for revenge. And so he's kind of using him in that way, inadvertently mm. starting the jihad. Um, but I think it, for the movie, it makes for a much m- better conclusion for Paul and the Baron to have Paul kill him rather than like a little baby run in and stab him <laughs> who has the, the mind powers of all the <laughs> Reverend mothers. Who's this very strange character, yeah. um, which is very cool. And I think, and I don't really know, like, why they didn't do the time skip. Um, the only reason I can think of is that they wanted to have Anya Taylor-Joy play Alia, and they couldn't skip forward in time that much, and they didn't want to, like, worry about hiring a child actor for Alia and, like, yeah. having to deal with, like, everything she does and the strangeness of her character. Um, but, yeah, I also think, like, in the book, the... Uh, the 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 fight at the end with Paul and Fade Rautha takes place in like the span of like a paragraph, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's just kind of over. That I do remember. <laughs> um, so I love I love that final battle in the in mm-hmm. the movie, and even in the movie, like it's a pretty quick fight, but there's just so much like dramatic weight to it being on the screen. Yeah. Um. So like I don't I think I'm I think I'm just more. I think it does boil down to like I read the book after I saw the movie and you read the book mm-hmm. before, so like there's gonna be like just bias. There's I think that's the main we, difference. Yeah. How we perceive Because I can it. imagine like if you, you read the last half of the book and then you watch the second movie and you're like, Where is all this stuff that was in the book? Mm-hmm. I watched the movie and I'm like 
and then I read the book and I'm like, whoa, there's all this added stuff that I kind of want to just get through to see the, <laughs> to read the stuff that I yeah. already know is going to happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I, I agree that I think that the absence of the time skip is probably the, the, um, the worst part about the second movie because of like the relationship between Paul and Shawnee. Mm -hmm. Cause she like, she hates him at first. And then in the span of like a couple days, she's like, no, actually, uh, I'm going to marry you. <laughs> He's kind of cute. I mean, he is Timothy Chalamet. Um, Tim Chim Chim. But man, that movie's good. I yeah, love. At the end of the day, um, it's real good. <laughs> it's really good. It's still real good. I love uh, Austin Butler as Fader Alpha. He's so good. Oh my gosh. Um, um, genuinely, that 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 is something I think. Um, as you were talking about it, right? Uh, Dune Part Two, the movie is mm. definitely like I, I wrote it in my first review it is the best we will ever get for an adaptation of this movie i yeah. mm -hmm. in my in my in my wildest dreams right we get a th we get a triple a trilogy based off this first book yeah but i think they could have made it work with a trilogy i think it could be perfect but the middle movie absolutely terrible that's nothing <laughs> nothing fair. happens in the middle of this movie no okay yeah. um, like uh, all the stuff with um it's i mean there's all this stuff movie. with like even the stuff that thufir does like uh where he's after the battle of arakeen and he's just like hanging out with random fremen I'm just like yeah. can we get can we get through this <laughs> once he like once he gets captured by the harkonnens and starts having conversations with the baron it gets more interesting yeah. Uh, but like we can spend but, so much more yeah. time with Thufir and more time we can set up uh Dune Messiah a little bit better um mm -hmm. with Gaius Helen Mohiam and maybe maybe we just like hey here's a Tele Laxu or something you yes know? just, just Tele Laxu the face dancers mm. um <laughs> yeah I love oh my gosh dude like Dune Messiah there's so many lines in that book where it's just like uh make the zabulin computrations of the tlaxum blabadoos yes <laughs> like, what dude. the hell is he talking about <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome it is we awesome. have to go we have to go back to the freehold else the burner destroy us our eyes <laughs> yes whatever what oh my that? other thing that i think the movies i think the best thing the movies do mm. is save the revelation that paul is a harkonnen to where he takes the uh the water of life or whatever mm. in the second movie because in the book jessica tells him that after they crash in the ornithopter right in the tent i think um, yeah in the Under, tent she tells him that yeah and it's just kind of like oh okay and then it's never talked about again right and the entirety of the rest of the book. Um, I think it, it was brilliant in terms of like screenplay to save that until the very end when Paul takes the water of life and he has that moment where he's like, so we're Harkonnens. Let's, uh, uh, there is like a pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there um, is a narrow way forward. It's so good. Oh my God. There gosh. is, I watched this right YouTube now. video um, talking about color theory in the second movie. Um, mm. and how they use they had like, uh, the emperor is always in green because he loved Leto Atreides and all this. Yeah. Or like when Paul finds out that he's a Harkonnen, then the next scene he's in is in the deep South and the sand is like black and the sky is yes. white, like Gaty prime. And it's like, it's whoa, brilliant. He's so a Harkonnen good. now. Oh my gosh, and the doing... Getty Prime sequence in that movie is so sick. The, yeah. the arena fight Fade. is so awesome. Rotha! Rotha! Yeah, that's, it's great. Uh, so good. But yeah, the second book. Yes, let's, let's talk uh, briefly. 12 spoilers years, 12 years later. The, yes. Right? 12 years have yeah, passed. Yeah, spoilers, spoilers. Uh, what's what's the final tally? Let's just, let's just rip off the band-aid. I think it's like 80 billion dead. Yes, uh, from the something. from the jihad. 
which is crazy. Yeah, those are crazy. <laughs> I remember reading numbers, that. Bro. I was like, oh, this is bad. <laughs> this is Paul's a bad, bad person. <laughs> this guy yeah. is not a hero in any way, shape, or not form. At all. <laughs> there is no salvation yeah. for this guy. No, he is not a messiah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, 12 years later, 80 billion dead. We're on uh, uh, Arrakis is now a bit more beautiful. There's some water, uh, yeah. there's a lake of some kind in Arakeen. Um, Jessica spends the entire book on Caladan, never makes an appearance, yep. which I was shook and by. And Gurney, um, Alec as well. Is Gurney is never mentioned. Well, he's mentioned. He's um, he's living on. We don't Caladan really know what he's doing. Her. Oh, that's right. Um, yes, Paul is the emperor. Mm -hmm. uh, he is still with Chani, um, mm -hmm. attempting to have children to produce an heir, a male Indeed. heir. Um, she, he is also married to Irulan, who is she? He's not trying to have kids with her, but she's like, please have kids please. with me. <laughs> I'm a Bene Gesserit. Please. I need to be I'm with child. Begging you. I have baby yes. fever. What is what is she trying to? Because she's trying to secure some, the blood something, line. some family, the bloodline, Always her bloodline, securing line. the bloodline, because um, the heir. Well, originally, right, uh, Paul was supposed yes. to be a girl, and mm -hmm. her child, Paul, Paul girl, her child, with uh, Fade Rotha was going. That that was the projected right. terminus for the Kwisatz Haderach. So yes. Jessica was like. I'll just skip a generation. It'll be my son, because uh, I love Leto, and uh, yep. don't we all? What a guy he was. We all man. love Leto. Freaking <clears throat> pissed I off. I love that guy. He was so good. Oscar. He's my poster for Dune. Um, um, but yeah, the first so we, we open the book. That. We open the book with a bunch of new characters, and mm -hmm. the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayam oh, is yes. meeting is having a meeting with. Um, Sky Skyland Skylar, uh, whatever his name is. What is his name? <laughs> I don't remember, dude. The face dancer, the uh, Tleilaxu face dancer. It does start with an S. We've got, um, we've got a fish man in an orange tank. We've yep. got, it's just those three, right? They're the conspirators. Um, Irulan is there too. Irulan, Cytale. Irulan is there. <clears throat> Cytale. That's right. Yes. Um, Sightail, what's the, um, guild, the guild guy's name? Uh, the Steel. Borf guild? or something. <laughs> Borf. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me look it up here. Let me find it. Is it Bijaz? No, no, no. That's the, uh. That's the later. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh. Um, but anyway, they're, while you're looking for it, they're, so, they're meeting <laughs> to, um, they're meeting to hatch a plan to kill the Padisha Emperor, uh, Paul Bronzo Atreides. Oh no, that's the interview guy. Yeah. Um, so their their plan is essentially that Irulan needs to get Paul to have a kid with her to secure the bloodline. Irulan has been administering a contraceptive to Chani through her food, so they can't have child. Um, the Face Dancer, Sightail, and the Guild... So, Sightail is from the Tleilaxu, which who knows what that is. Um, he has produced what they call a, uh, a Tleilaxu Gola mm. uh, that has taken the form of Duncan, Idaho. So, they can essentially, like, if somebody is killed... Uh, before an amount of time passes, while the cells are still alive, they can take that body and essentially reproduce it into a cyborg being, <clears throat> and they can manufacture it in whoever way they want. So they manufacture a Gola that is a, also a Mentat that also looks like Duncan Idaho, and they're going to use him to kill Paul, basically. So that's like the setup for the whole book, and they're doing their thing in the background. Um, they introduced this guy duncan to paul and he's like yeah that looks like duncan i guess i'm gonna hang out with him um <clears throat> while paul's just trying to keep up with all this stuff 
you know, he's just ruling the galaxy. Um, Stilgar is there. Um, he can't find it. He can't find I have, it. I have absolutely, he cannot. I'm literally reading the part that's referencing, and they just <laughs> only ever say the conspirator. They don't have a name for him for some reason. I don't know why. Okay. Anyway, we'll find it, it doesn't really book. Oh, snap. He's going to find his Whoa. name. Oh, and uh, Alia is around. She's the Reverend Mother on Arrakis at the moment. <clears throat> I'll just look here. The book. Why won't they give me names? <laughs> Edric. Edric. Edric the Guild Steersman. Edric. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, help me, help me with the plot of this book. What's okay, going yeah. on? What I, we... I gave you the setup. Did you? <laughs> yes, I, I gave you the setup. They've the conspirators. What they're doing? They got the goal right. that looks like Duncan. They're thinking they can get Paul to trust Duncan, the Gola, enough to, uh, and so that he'll be able to kill him in some way right because <clears throat> they want to get rid of paul after he has secured the bloodline with yes Irulan, they want they want Irulan pregnant and then they will kill uh well ideally i think they want to kill paul johnny and alia probably if yes, they can definitely because they alia, alia is an abomination abomination <laughs> so the other thing that's going on now uh -huh. is that the fremen the the real desert fremen from the beginning days, the Fedekin and all of them, right? They yes. are, they're kind of over the jihad. They kind of want to go back <laughs> to the desert and yeah. just chill and do their blood just rites. Just hang out with worms and stuff. Yeah, they kind of want to go back. Drink everybody's water. They're, they're over, they're over oceans and cool stuff and killing everybody that ever lived. Yeah. They yeah. just want to vibe back home. All of the grabbing. Um, mm. are making their pilgrimage to the great uh, God being Dune man. Um, <laughs> God being Dune man. In yes. Alia's giant temple that she does uh, palm readings in. Yes. Uh, and there's this whole thing with the tarot. I don't... Did you ever understand what the tarot was and what that was like this competing prescient memory? I don't know. <sighs> Because they they're like literal tarot cards, like yeah. Because Gaius Helen Mohayim has like literal tarot cards that she turns over and she's like, oh man, I don't like that. Because <laughs> it's like, it's like a picture doing? of Paul or something. This guy can literally so it's like, see the future. I think it's just like also it's like re religious propaganda, um, right? That they spread, you know, throughout the land, plans within plans, and all that. Sure. Um, to get people to buy into their fake religion that might be real who knows and so the whole vibe is off for paul um everybody <laughs> so is kind of over it um but they still have to worship him because there are fanatical people like the, the majority of people are still fanatical and yeah. like love him and would do anything for him fanatical for legions him worshiping at the shrine of my father's skull <laughs> that's right there they are you know that's what happened um and, but all the important people are like over it, right? Yeah. They're super mm -hmm. bored about it. All the veterans live in the suburbs and they're like, "Ugh, I just want to live in the sand again, man. <laughs> I just want to live in a cave and smell oh. bad, man. We're living this nine um, to five life in this Dude, they don't even paradise. have jobs. Gosh, <laughs> dang it. They don't, <laughs> they just hang out. They just worship. Um, it's crazy. All day. And, yeah. um, I mean, of course, it's horrible what they did, obviously. But but that's, it's uh, besides it's the real point. Bad. It's besides the point. Um, so Paul is like, you know, I wish I could get out of this and just go live in the desert with Chiani, too. Yeah. But I mm -hmm. kind of put myself in this position now, and I kind of got to lay in my bed, yeah. right? I kind of am a god emperor, I know. Right. So. I am kind of <laughs> am god emperor, dude. Um... <laughs> 
Except Where's my not. chapter house? You know what oh, I mean, guys? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the heretics, man? Uh, where um, are those heretics of Dune? Uh, of Dune. House Carino? We'll never know. <laughs> we'll never see them. Um, so anyway. he's kind of stuck doing his thing. And he's like, you know what, Johnny? Let's go out to the desert and have a baby. Because guess what? Irulan is mm-hmm. poisoning your food so that you can't have babies. Except yeah. I don't think he ever explains that to her. He just knows that. and oh, doesn't She, do she figures it out. She, she figures okay. it out. He he doesn't even know. She storms in. She's like, "Hey, your freaking wife has been poisoning me. I'm going to kill her." And Paul's like, uh, "Hey, oh, man. that's right. Just like hey, we can't man. kill her. <laughs> well, yeah, she's, she's very beautiful. She's plan. Florence Pugh. <laughs> she's important to the plans. <laughs> she's literally Florence Pugh. We cannot kill Florence Pugh. That's true. Um, Unless you, Alia is Oppenheimer. Yeah, um, Alia is around. She's." Hanging out with the fake Duncan Idaho. They're having conversations, have it sharing moments. Very philosophical. Um, Hand holding and philosophical. Yeah. Um, there's At a romance point, brewing. Uh, yeah. Very cute. At one point, um, I think the Reverend Mother Gellis, Gellis High and Mohiam, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, yes. you know what we could do? Uh, we could have Paul and Alia have a kid. And everybody's <laughs> yeah. like, ew, gross. And uh, it's I don't think it's brought up again. I think they just kind of like they're like, yeah, all right, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I brought it up there. There are de- I reading reviews of this book there. There are definitely valid criticisms of the way that uh, women are treated in this book. Mm. <laughs> uh, not great stuff. Um, Chani is just like an object who really wants Paul to have kids with her. And Irulan is just her, like an uh, object who really wants Paul to have kids with her. Yeah. Um, there's this whole scene where Alia is completely naked and she goes and fights a training robot for a while. Um, like, fast. come on, Frank. Really fast. <laughs> Very fast. Which was fascinating. I was like, this is cool. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's some there's some valid criticisms there from yeah. the from frank herbert but you know it was the 60s or whatever that's how they were back then 70s i don't know so it's okay um, so it's okay <laughs> well that, that's I mean, what i'm saying that's my position <laughs> no um <laughs> similar criticisms have been brought up with um the baron harkonnen in general being like a representation uh, of uh, frank's hatred of gay people um <laughs> and how they're all pedophiles yeah yes um and how he hates his son, which you know, there's valid <laughs> there's valid criticisms there to be had yes, as well. There's like, let's, there's let's enough evidence it. stacked against uh, Frank in that in that arena. Uh, Dang it! And he's from Oregon, this or Washington, whatever doesn't matter. I Probably don't from the know. east side. Who knows? Let's Who go. Knows? Um, but but anyways, yeah, I um yeah, <laughs> I really liked the book. I thought it was fascinating. There's just lots of there's lots of it's a very conversation heavy book. Um, so there, it definitely was, I feel like I read it faster though. So I don't, I don't really think it was any, I don't think it was boring for me. I was fascinated by the, the different groups of people and what they think about Paul and Paul talking to his subordinates and like how he interacts with them. Like he does present himself as this kind of benevolent ruler who is kind to his, you know, subjects and subordinates. Right. Um, So you're like, you feel for him and he, he genuinely loves Shawnee, but he's also like, he's, he's this very powerful spiritual being in this way. That's like really off putting. Cause you're like, people just try to talk to him. You're like, Paul, can you just have a normal conversation with me? (laughs) He's like, no, 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 no. I've seen all of this. I I have seen a future that's not really a future because it's happening now in the present, but it might not actually happen that way. And they're just like, Paul, could you just freaking, could you just pass the steak? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Could you pass the salt over here, my guy? First, you Uh, must walk down this incredibly long hallway. And while you're walking (laughs) down this hallway, please remember and note how many times you think this hallway is really long. And it's a whole, like, <laughs> yes. not only is it long, it's yeah, a whole a plan. Long, right? And then yeah. you get into the room, and it's a really big room. It's a very big room. <laughs> this room is as big as Paul Atreides. 
Um, <laughs> it's one of the hardest things about reading books is <laughs> that there's just so much like, and this room had the tone of the blade of grass from the early seasons of springtime in the mm. early eastern province of Malaysia, and it was uh, the weather was such as the as the, when I was a baby boy in the year nineteen oh seven. Wow, <laughs> just like whoa, uh, but also plot. Yes, I understand. It's like descriptive writing, and it's like a whole thing that's necessary for good writing. But like, right. this hallway is very long. It was a really hall- long hallway, and she <laughs> was intimidated by that. Um, but I, I, the other thing I like was the, the kind of Blade Runner, comparison of like Duncan Idaho being this, manufactured being, mm. and him, he is Duncan Idaho. And funny name, by the way, for this, like we got Still we got funny. freaking Corbus and in, in Blay Bluksu and blah blah blah, and then we got Duncan Idaho. It's hilarious. Yeah. Um, and Jessica and Paul, <clears throat> but his whole journey is like he's been created to do this one thing. He even he tells Paul up front. Paul asks him like, "Hey, uh, what's your objective here?" And Duncan is like, "I'm here to kill you." So they want me to kill you anyway. And Paul's like, cool, that's awesome, vibes. Um, so his journey is like wrestling with, he's he's able to connect with Duncan Idaho's memories in certain ways. Like he knows Paul, he knows that he should have memories of Paul and like people like Ernie Halleck and Jessica. Um, and so from there to the end of the book is his journey like, what his what his what is his actual purpose? Does he have any actual agency? Mm-hmm. Um, what you know? What makes somebody human and all of that good right. commentary stuff? Um, and he has all these. He's a mentat. Also, he's also a what do they call him? A Zabulin? Yeah, something? there's like a there's an extra like a priest. Rare. Yeah, there's a yeah. philosopher sect philosopher that yeah. can like. They have all these tenets and stuff as well as yeah. a mentat. And I, yeah, and at one point, being a Paul's goal. like, "Listen, guys, there were, at one time there was this guy named Adolf Hitler." Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, "Whoa, okay." Think, huh? um, it just re- it, yeah, they're like just reminding re- you that this takes place in uh, our actual timeline in the future. Right. Um, it's like one it's of the first. I mean, obviously, they they in the first book they mentioned the Catholic Bible, the Orange Catholic yes. Bible. Uh, so like obviously it is but that's not in the first movie it's not no. in, it's not in the movie either movie that they really reference our world at all but it is yeah. it does take place in our future yes. the atreides family is greek they're <laughs> yes it's fascinating which is, it's like wild they're just yeah. greek people um but yeah, I, I I will say, furthering the uh, the hate slash Duncan Idaho thing, there's a specific conversation between him and Sightail. I think it's Sightail. No, probably it's the other. It's the short guy, that's barely in the book that Sightail hires Corba? as well. Oh no, yeah. Mm-hmm. The the de, de Jeerling or whatever I don't remember. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He briefly, he's another Gola, and he talks to Duncan, and he's like, I'm going to give you the passphrase to turn into a killer here, and you're not going to know, and it's going to be when Chani dies, and Chani just dies off screen at one point. She's just dead. Oh, yeah. And and Paul's going to walk in, and he's going to say these words, or somebody's going to walk in and say these words to Paul. And uh, that happens, and he's like, oh, I'm going to kill Paul. And then Paul's like, no, you're not. You're Duncan Idaho. And he's like, oh, I'm Duncan <laughs> Idaho. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, dude, the, like, yeah, it, it was just kind of funny, though, how it So, how yeah, it Paul's, down. again, spoiler alert, if anyone's listening to this, which I know you're not, um, <laughs> uh, the Paul's journey ends up, he's, he's in the city Mm-hmm. visiting somebody and okay, somebody who who bombs them i don't even remember i'm There's pretty like, somebody sure drops a bomb it's the uh the sardaukar okay i think that that sounds right yeah um they drop a bomb on arrakis it's like a 
somewhat nuclear bomb of some kind. And it doesn't kill these people, but it blinds them. So Paul, um, his eyes are gone, and he's now blind, completely blind. But he's he can see. <laughs> yeah. He can qu- see in italics. He's um, like Daredevil. Yeah, he is like Daredevil. Um, and from that point on, I I freaking love the book. Like his whole like being able to still see in italics Mm. and the the fremen custom is like if you're if a member of your clan is blinded they're useless and you must abandon them in the desert because they don't have any use for dead weight you know yeah um so stillgar's like dude i might have to like leave you in the desert and paul's like listen i can still see i promise you i can see you right now dude i'm <laughs> i can see a narrow you, way bro. through yeah um the climax of the book um so before chani dies she gives birth to luke and leia um twins twin siblings right. a boy and a girl yes 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 luke and leia definitely didn't inspire george lucas at all dune the concept um so these two kids are in a room with paul and alia comes in with um sightail and sightail is like hey man if you listen to me i can take chani's body and turn her into a gola so you can be with her again forever uh, because we can essentially resurrect her um what if you don't take that offer I'm going to kill you and your children (laughs) because you're (laughs) blind. Um, And so he's, so Paul is blind, but he starts, he all of a sudden gets a picture of the room and it's from the perspective of his daughter's eyes. And he realizes that he can tap into his children's consciousnesses and he can see in the room through their eyes. And so he's like, Sightail is like to his back and then he like, does a maneuver and like kills him he like threw a, oh he grabs a knife and i just knocked my thing off the, oh my gosh <laughs> i just knocked a black manta off my shelf he yeah. throws a knife into Saitel's face because he could see and it was awesome i love that part <laughs> it's so cool it was like i was seeing the movie in in front of my eyes so like that's gonna be awesome and not if long after that Denis paul Villeneuve. is like okay it's over i'm blind now yeah yeah He's like, I can't keep doing this. Um, so they leave him out in the desert, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm assuming die. he's probably not dead and he will show up again. But, or maybe he just dies. I don't know. I will. Uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. I think I am going. Well, I'm going to a lake on Friday oh. to read nice. at the lake. Uh, so it's either going to be uh, restarting Game of Thrones. Nice. Or uh, Children of Dune. So we shall see what happens with Luke and Leia. Which is, the, I don't know yeah. I don't know the girl's name. I didn't know she existed. Um, so that was a genuine surprise for me, which is exciting. Uh, but Leto Atreides, yeah, that was again. Awesome. Little Leto. Little Leto, yes. And he Looking. is important. Let's see if there's anything else we need to talk about. Something, something golden wrap up. path. Um, something important to talk about is Star Trek. Something important to talk about is uh, Bad Boys colon Ride or Die. Uh, <laughs> we're watching the the Penguin. We'll give yep. Well, well, we should give a series review, and that's all out. Um, you, you just watched, watched the first, the first episode? episode. Yeah, yeah I yeah. just finished it right before. You we literally just watched it. it. Yep. What did you think? Did you hate it? Uh, no, I you hated it. it. <laughs> You I hated it, was nice. it. No, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no. promise. You know what else? I, I definitely. Hate? I was like, oh. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you go. Ahead. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you. I'm about to change the topic, so you, uh, you finish okay. your thought on Penguin. The first episode of the Penguin, I was like, I wish this was better, but I see the vision and I want it to be good all the way through. Mm. The thing I can say is that the episode was longer than 30 minutes, and that was very good. I'm, I was, was over thrilled an hour. to see it was over an hour long. I was thrilled to see a comic book show 
that t is taking itself seriously, and I am not watching Agatha Harkness, Coven of Chaos, The Witch is Back. Agatha is all along all the time. I will not watch it um, until maybe if it's all out and the general consensus is that it's actually good, maybe I'll right. watch it. But at this I've point, I'm not about, by the way. wasting my time. I've heard it's okay, but I'm not going to waste any of my time. Yeah. Um, go ahead, take, change the subject. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I saw an animated film recently called oh. Transformers 1. Whoa. And Transformers 1 is a very good movie, and you should see it in theaters. Nobody's um, seeing it, dude. It's bombing I, terribly at the box I office. Want, I want the sequels, please. Okay. I need more Transformers 1. And they should name the second one Transformers 2. <laughs> <laughs> just like uh, the uh, yeah no no it's but in all seriousness it was i was genuinely surprised i was going into it and i sat down with my icy and i said to myself i said i will be really happy if this is a three-star movie um because hmm. i you know i don't have a working relationship with transformers anymore Me um neither. i used to transform them uh from time to time in my in my youth um, and I enjoy Sam Wood Wiki's, uh, probably just the first one. I'll be honest, just the first one. Um, I enjoy all three of those movies. I in have their own not. Ways. I haven't seen. Um, Mr. Wahlberg. What's the second one called? Wrath of the Dark Side of the Moon. Well, um, the Shia LaBeouf ones are Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen, and then Dark, dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, I think the moon, is the yeah. third one. Which one's and the then Mark one Wahlberg's the old man is in Chicago. Uh, old Man in Chicago. I don't know. And Carmen Falcone's in them, which is great. Yeah. There's Age of Extinction, and then there's The Last Night. Right. Revenge Those are the two the Mark Fallen. Wahlberg's ones. And then there's Bumblebee. Yeah. And then there's Transformers. Some of them are gorillas, which came out last year. Rise of the Beasts of No Nation. Yes. Um, but yeah. so you you really like Transformers one? No, you think I think it's I, really good. I'm I'm sitting here thinking about putting a half star on that four star right now. Where do honest. you, where do you think, if we're comparing it to not we're not comparing it to Spider Man across the Spider Verse, but if we're comparing okay. it to Spider Man into the Spider Verse, wow, a movie that has proved itself to be. Uh, animated movie that people across the globe love and consider Indeed. to be great or like tmnt mutant mayhem where are we putting it alongside those movies? i'm gonna put it right in between those movies okay um it's better better than, than mutant, mutant Ninja Turtles? mayhem yeah okay i w I, I couldn't possibly put it over spider-man um no, no. purely off that of would be crazy purely off of my love for spider-man over my love for transformers right um i think Plus, Into the Spider-Verse has that elevated level of the animation being world-class. Oh, yeah. I don't think... Mm -hmm. I mean, the movie is good, and the whole anyone can wear a mask thing is, like, really great. But Absolutely. I don't think it's doing anything revolutionary other than the art. The animation is revolutionary. Yeah. But if it were animated, like, freaking, I don't know, Tangled, Three, we, would, yeah. we wouldn't be talking about it right now. Not, not, not you know six years later um yeah, yeah but transformers one again also doesn't I, I wouldn't say it looks amazing sure um in that vein that's the vibe um, i think that's the only reason i wasn't looking forward to it at all is because the the trailer on one hand was just not a great trailer and the animation looked kind of cartoon network vibe i was like yeah all right no it um it it transcended that for me it felt great the story was what really drove it well, I felt. Okay. Uh, and I also audibly laughed multiple times. Um, Keegan-Michael Key is B-17, who is Bumblebee. Sure. In this film. Assuming, I'm assuming he's Bumblebee. They didn't really... B-127, excuse me. Oh. Um, he does not get a, a, a change of name at the end. Uh, Lawrence Fishburne is in this movie. If Whoa. you're interested in Lawrence Fishburne being being one Alpha Trion, 
Uh, Lawrence Fishburne is in a movie I saw too. Oh if my god! Want to talk the about Matrix. it? Megalopolis. <laughs> oh my goodness! I would like to talk about oh, Megalopolis. Oh man! I also saw Dude, Beetlejuice Megalopolis. and Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Dude, you said his name three times. Whoa! Oh my gosh! It's over for me. I'm dead. <laughs> or something. Yeah, I saw a movie called Megalopolis. I was, I attended a special live streamed premiere from the New York Film Festival where they live streamed a pre-show interview with Francis Ford Coppola, mm. Spike Lee, and Robert De Niro, and they Spike talked Lee. for 30 minutes about how much they don't like Donald Trump, and it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> they're like, so Megalopolis, and Robert De Niro was like, listen, we have to stop Trump. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> like, what is it like? What? When did you first meet Francis Ford Coppola? Well, it was like... It was many years before Trump, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> He's just going uh, on. It was and very on. funny, um, and then and then we saw the movie in IMAX, and it was definitely an experience that I mm. I really want you to see it before I talk in depth about it. Yeah, um, I I think I might be moving away from star ratings. I'm 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 kind of enjoying just throwing a like or not a like on it and being like here's what i think about a movie because star ratings are so like what does they what does it really mean you know oh, I mean? Geez. Uh, but it, just go to film school already <laughs> i can't even look I, i'm at just you. saying I, <laughs> i'm just saying it's it's it, it megalopolis is definitely a movie where it's like i can't i cannot assign a star number to this mm. thing that i just saw because it's equal parts uh terrible <laughs> and also fascinatingly fun and cool um like, but it's, um, it's it's crazy what's that movie that came out last year babylon uh that was a couple of years ago babylon is not terrible in any way shape or form it okay. is a masterpiece right. of filmmaking i love it so much okay um, well <laughs> i watched about 20 minutes of that movie know. It's the director of La La Land, a movie you haven't yeah, seen. Yeah, that's probably so why I you didn't You wouldn't like it get all. it. You wouldn't <laughs> get it. Uh, <laughs> I I rewatched the Batman in in, in anticipation oh, yeah. of reduced, Penguin. I have officially reduced it to four and a half because I can no longer pretend that it is the perfect movie because it is not. Um, mm. But it's still not as good as Star Wars: The Last Jedi. It's not as good as Star Wars: The Last Jedi. No, but. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, what oh. does that even mean? You know, star ratings. Uh. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, I watched Pan's Labyrinth. I didn't like that at all. Um, oh, I, I got this. the Fall Guy extended cut. It's over here. Oh, you did? Yes. I got the Criterion Collection Irishman. Ooh. The Irishman. The three and a half hour Martin Scorsese epic gangster film. Uh, it's really good. If you got the time to spend mm-hmm. watching it, it's I was fantastic. about to. Uh, I I woke up a little late, so I missed my chance. But I was going to start the day with Horizon, and American Saga Chapter One. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, but I I, uh, I woke up too late. Feel free, feel free. I support that decision to watch that movie <laughs> if you really want to. <laughs> because uh, if you come away from that movie giving it like, if you give it more than one and a half stars i would i would have major reservations <laughs> look i gotta that. say i watched uh, about but... i watched about 15 minutes of it dude um before i watched a quiet place day one because i already was just yeah. like eh, i can't do this tonight <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think uh, like the music that movie good. the movie is like if i were if i were tuning into a an episode of a Western epic TV show. And I knew there, and I watched it in 45 minute increments. I, it would be fine. It would be fine. There's lots of plot lines that it's basically, it's basically six episodes of a TV show smushed into a three and a half hour movie. Mm. So like, if you watch it in different parts it probably wouldn't feel as bad as it did for me sitting there for the entire thing and hating every minute of it gosh that movie <laughs> made me so angry 
Ugh. Kevin Costner doesn't even show up till like the second hour of three hours. Dude, no way. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. I'm yeah, seeing I the don't... wild robot in a few minutes, so. Oh my gosh, I'm so I'm excited for you. That. Yay. I. Uh, I'm not. And I'm sad about it. <laughs> I don't. I currently. I well. I'm. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not a Regal Unlimited member anymore. So my. That. that was really sad for to be me more, to hear. I have to be more choosy about my. Uh, film choices. So like going oh, to yeah. see the Killers game or whatever with <laughs> tiny Dave Batista. I'm not gonna yeah. like that movie. I'm not gonna pay thirteen, fifteen dollars for the ticket anymore. Yeah. It's you fair, know? and it's that's fair. sad because I want to go see bad movies. I know. Once you, know? you move here, we gotta we can, support we the get theater. On, get on the A list and join my entourage, and we'll go see every movie yes. that ever comes out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I started. I started rewatching Joker, guys, because the oh, second snap. one's coming out, and I was like, "Oh no, guys, is this a bad movie?" And I didn't oh, finish no. it. Um. So we'll see what happens with that. I'll see the second one. I'm I'm looking forward to it being a musical. That sounds awesome. I'm also um, uh, yeah. I'm also excited for that movie. Yes, um, Gladiator Two. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go see the Pharrell Williams Lego Movie. How's Dude, that sound? Anna does <laughs> want to go to that. I think she said. So there's 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 some interest for that. Uh, oh, me and Anna started whoa. our Harry Potter watch. Um, okay. Oh yes. My my understanding is that Anna hasn't seen them or read the okay. books, but she knows she knows things. We watched Philosopher's Stone, as it is called sure. in England. Um, uh-huh. Even though. In the movie, they call it the Sorcerer's Stone. I really don't. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, <laughs> and Anna was under the assumption that Alan. Well, sorry, that I. Well, she asked me if Quirrell <laughs> was bad, right? That if Quirrell sure. was the bad guy, which mm. is the case. And you're um, like, yes. But I made the joke because this movie came out in 2001, that it was bad of Anna to make that assumption. Um, okay. Because he wears a turban. And... Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so she was like, okay, so I'm sorry. And then she just assumed that uh, Snape was the bad guy for the rest okay. of the movie. <laughs> yeah. And it, wor- it worked to absolute perfection. Then when that Will is was there... Uh, in the with the mirror of Eris head, um, <laughs> then it, she was like, "Oh, that is you what you're supposed me. to think." If I remember correctly, right? You're supposed to think Snape is like evil, yeah, all the time, because he's uh, mean. But it's, he's it, a but mean it's guy. super super obvious. So we, yes. I, I took that opportunity to create a sort of misdirect. Um, that was awesome. And awesome. uh, my reviews will include the Alan Rickman sass meter or the ARSM. <laughs> I love that. Alan Rickman. So that's exciting for us. Um, yeah, I don't know. What we else watched that Last of Us Part 2 trailer. Dude, let's freaking Dude. go right now. Did um, you watch it? I did not. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> I could watch it. Throw right it on now. right now. Watch Dude, the trailer. Throw it on. I'm going to throw it on my iPad too. real quick. I'll throw it on right now. I'll throw it on right now. Oh my god! Can't even stop me. Are we throwing it on? Can you? Just, let's throw it on right now. I'm gonna throw Here it on. Here goes. Oh god. Okay. Oh dang. Copyright. We'll just cut this out. Yeah. Not the guitar, Joel. Don't pick up the guitar. I'm going to cry. Hold up. Let me suck those tears in. It's so sad. Already? How are they going to cast a different person to play freaking Dahlia or whatever her name is? The motion capture girl is right there.
Yo. It's what's her face? Caitlin, I think. Caitlin, we love Caitlin. I guess the whistlers. <gasps> Give us the whistling in the trailer. Jenna Malone? Yeah, no, it's going to be the greatest show of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it looks so good. I'm so excited. I think I do think that they're going. 2025. I mean, it, 2024 is already almost over. It's, I understand. We still got Arcane Season 2 coming up this year. Anyway. Dude. Uh, I do think they're going to do this season, and they're, the season's going to end with the switch to Abby's story. I don't think they're going to do all of, like... Mm. I don't think they're, I don't I do not think they're gonna do the whole game in one season because the first season was only eight episodes. If they try to do yeah. that whole game, no, it'd be impossible. Four episodes, Ellie. Four episodes, Abby. I don't think that would work. So I think they're gonna do. It would be terrible. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree. Actually, they need to do Abby justice. She needs. Yes. She, she needs her needs, own season. Yes. Caitlin so, Denver. Oh, oh. Yes. She. Denver. Deaver. Def, Rufus Def. Wainwright, dude. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Commissioner Gordon's in it. Yes. Let's go. What's his <clears> name? <throat> uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt. No. No. <laughs> Jonathan. Um, <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> I once wrote his name wrong in a review oh. and you corrected me. I always. Jeffrey Wright. It's Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright. What did I say? I always forget. <laughs> Rufus his name. Wainwright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Completely wrong. Rufus um, Wainwright. I, I'm like, I think you're referring to Jeffrey Wright. <laughs> but Rufus Wainwright, isn't that the guy that sings Hallelujah in Shrek? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, he's in the Hunger Games. That's crazy. Yes. Rufus Wainwright All right. is the singer. I gotta the, go. The special Do you wanna try to edit this into some sort of episode? I can try to edit this into some sort of episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'd be great that'd be awesome i don't know if it'll come or if out. you want me to if you want me to do it since you got star trek coming up i can do this one i but i way. do have a couple busy days friday and saturday so i might not be able to get it out on tuesday no unless worries. it's i mean it's not like anyone's waiting around for their quarter twins episode what do you mean dude <laughs> The guy who commented gay on our last video is waiting <laughs> for this next video. I'm sure he is. I'm I actually sure know he him. Is. He he is he is waiting. <laughs> He's sitting at gay. his computer right now. Oh my gosh. The pressure is on. No, but uh you gotta go. I gotta go eat a freaking bowl of chili, dude. Right. Oh, it's chili time, the shining time. Oh. It's getting close. It's getting close. Okay. Last thing, last. Thing. Are you done? Are you still recording? Nope. All right, I'm. Re I'm still recording. Um, Got it. Editors, editors, extra section here. Welcome back to the Quarter Twins Online. Um, Hello. Uh, for Halloween last year, me and Anna watched Coherence, The Shining, and okay. Doctor Sleep. Okay. Anna said she liked Coherence. She thought it was okay. Recently, I brought it up. We're going to watch Coherence and The Shining again. We both didn't like Dr. Sleep. We're not going to watch it. She says, yep. Dr. Sleep, w or sorry, Coherence was a terrible movie. She hated it. It was boring and bad. And she said she Whoa. liked it because we were in a new relationship. And Whoa. I said, this is she absolutely out out outrageous <laughs> claim. I don't even care about the lying part. Uh, the fact that she does, the the fact that she doesn't <laughs> like coherence is my issue. Yes, I know that that is crazy. It's crazy because the movie is so good. <laughs> I liked it a lot. I thought it was really good. It's like it's such a mind bender, bro. It's crazy. 
And she's just like, yeah, no, it was terrible and boring, and I hated it, and it looked bad, and it was edited Ugh. poorly. And I'm like, dude, it's well, c- the budget was like negative a hundred bucks, bro. <laughs> they filmed it on a Sony, and in some d- in the producer's house. Like it's, it is it's definitely could, well made for the budget that they had. It's crazy. I don't even know if they paid anyone. <laughs> Nobody got paid. All of them are living on the street. They they probably just found a box. Like, they just had a lockbox, and they just had some random things at, the, at that yeah. house. And they're like, just put them in there. We'll figure it out. And they did it. There's no, they don't, there's no effects. Maybe there's one, the one effect of the, uh, yeah, of the, um, the meteor, the comet. Right. That's it. I've been but thinking that about might even Halloween. Halloween. Oh, uh, coming coming up because this is the year of horror movies for Jordan. Right. I want to make sure that I we need a Spooktober watch. episode. We do. I I need to make sure I watch a good horror movie. I need to make a list of movies I need to watch around Halloween <clears throat> that I haven't seen. Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead is on my list that I need to okay. watch because um, I've never seen that. I love Sam Raimi. You could just watch uh, Spider-Man 2. That's a horror film. It is scary, scary. Um, yeah. I need to watch Midsummer. Ooh. That's like a classic, that's a good movie. you know. Uh, Anna made me not watch one, some parts. Because I told her well, I get scared. She protected you? Yeah, she literally was like, smothered me with a pillow <laughs> until I died. Um, during some until parts. Until you died? That's not well. true. I'm dead. <laughs> Clearly, you're alive. I got a, I got a, I okay. got a bio exorcist friend. All right, see you guys later. Peace out. Bye. 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 <laughs> I'm out of here.